The Great Nicobar Island project has been a mega infrastructure project for the southern tip of the Great Nicobar Island in Andaman Sea of India. Amid the 2004 earthquake followed by tsunami which gobbled up the landmass and stripped the coast in Nicobar Island, the India government decided to have a mega infrastructure project which costs around rupees 75,000 crores. Now the Congress has demanded a thorough review of the clearances and have raised major concerns on the lifestyle of tribal communities that would be affected because of this project. Congress's Jairam Ramesh has announced a thorough review of, for the clearances. In fact, uh, so that's of course uh, uh, the story that we're tracking for you and in fact viewers what I have over here uh, on my screens and I'm going to request my PCR to pan it over here are basic, uh, are essentially uh, the bases that China has already established. So you see the first one on your screens, this is uh, uh, the mischief reef uh, which has been established. This, these are of course the China's secret bases uh, that I am referring to at this point of time. When we take a look at the second one, uh, you have the uh, Quarteron Reef over here, which has of course also uh, been established. Again, a China's uh, again uh, a Chinese secret base that we're referring to. Uh, the Gavin Reef, a picture over here. These are of course all drone shots uh, that we have for you in order to make you understand the kind of uh, infrastructure that they already have established. We have the Spartly Island over here. You can see, of course, this is a rather clear visual for you, and you see the amount of infrastructure that they have already established. Here we have the fire across reef um, again a drone uh, a satellite in fact visual on your screen of uh, this secret base that has been established by China when we take a look at the Subi reef uh, uh, you see um, a sort of uh, an inverted L shape uh, or in fact an, uh, a C shape over here and you see uh, the amount of infrastructure and in, fa and in fact it also shows the kind of capabilities uh, that they have already established. We have the Woody Island over here and you can see the satellite image on your screens. It gives us an understanding on uh, China's secret bases. We of course also have over here the Djibouti Horn of Africa. Again uh, a satellite image over here to help you viewers understand the kind of uh, infrastructure structure that they already have established. We have the Reem base uh, in Cambodia. Again, you can see we've marked it out for you over here. So you see uh, uh, this is exactly what we are referring to. And these are, of course, all uh, the Chinese secret bases that have been established and we have an understanding uh, on them. All right. Uh, so now we've taken a look at China's secret bases. We're also going to give you a larger understanding on the great Nicobar Islands, what exactly it is, uh, how big is it, and we're going to give you all those details uh, uh, right about now. Okay, so when we talk about the Great Nicobar Island, the total area is 921 square kilometers. Uh, the population, when we talk about the population, it's roughly 10,000. Uh, and the distance from the mainland is roughly 1,300 kilometers. So, of course, you see we've marked it out for you over here. As far as the distance uh, from the mainland is concerned, you can see, of course, this is the island that we are referring to. And, of course, uh, 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 this is the distance that we're talking uh, between the mainland. It's roughly 1,300 kilometers. So, of course, that gives us, an under uh, in fact, a geographical uh, understanding on the distance. When we talk about... Uh, uh, the village in Nicobar district, it, it, the largest settlement is 5,740. Uh, we are of course talking about the Campable Bay over here. So we give you a better understanding on that front as well. We're going to take a look at some more uh, uh, details and information that we have over here for you. And again, we're talking of course about the Great Nicobar Island project. Uh, the total cost for this project is uh, 75,000 crores. The proposal date was January 18th, 2021. So of course, uh, uh, that's the amount that it's going to cost in order to build uh, the Great Nicobar Island project. What's being planned? Of course, that's something that looms large. We have the Galthia Bay ICTT capacity of 14.2 million TEUs. So, of course, uh, uh, that's there on the agenda as far as the Great Nicobar Island project is concerned. Again, uh, more details on that front. The Great Nicobar Greenfield Airport uh, and with, in fact, a capacity of 4,000 passengers that's also there on the agenda as far as the great nicobar island project is concerned we're going to take a look at some more details that we have over you over here uh, to in fact give you a better understanding on this island and on this project uh, as well but for now viewers of course um, 
rupees 75,000 crores is what it's going to take in order to build this project. And again, as we were telling you what's being planned, uh, uh, more information on that front, Great Nicobar Gas and Solar Power Plant with a capacity of 45, in fact, 450 MVA. So, of course, uh, that's also there on the agenda. Moving on to new greenfield coastal city, uh, that's also there on the agenda as far as this project is concerned. So we're here, of course, we just give you an understanding on what exactly uh, you know is being planned as far as this project is concerned. We're going to, of course, take a look at the existing infrastructure, the infrastructure that's already there in place, the INS Bars uh, Naval Base at Campable Bay, which is already established. That's something that's already there in the pictures you can of course um, uh, you know again we give you an understanding on uh, um, uh, the, the basic details of this we've also of course given you an understanding on uh, the infrastructure projects, what is there on the agenda and what is already established. So that's of course there and uh, uh, in fact uh, joining me on the telecast is the group captain UK Devnath, a defence expert. So a very good, good afternoon to you and thank you so much for taking our time and speaking to us on News X. Now when we talk about uh, the Nicobar revamp, this project that's of course there in the picture. Uh, what is your assessment? How important is it to establish, um, you know, infrastructure, especially uh, with with the developments that are taking place uh, with China? Oh yes, Asavri Andaman Nicobar Islands, Great Andaman Nicobar Islands remain a very very strategic part of India. Uh, India's long term strategic objectives are to control the Indian Ocean. And we have said so on international forums, which includes not only the southern part of Indian Ocean, going, extending all the way up to Australia, Antarctica, but also the western part of India, Arabian Sea, going all the way up to Africa, uh, Horn of Africa. We also want to control entire Bay of Bengal and Strait of Malacca and beyond that. Uh, we should not forget that Chinese have already made ingress into Cocoa Island and have established a spy base at Cocoa Islands. Uh, what is India's interest? We want economic development of Andaman Nicobar because that will lead to militarily strengthening Andaman Nicobar as a uh, base. The uh, Niti Aayog is working on it and 75,000 crore worth of projects to develop an international airport, international seaport, uh, power plant projects and gas uh, uh, and uh, solar power plants are already in pipeline. Any uh, people are, uh, some people, uh, I do not know why, are uh, resisting installation of these, uh, development of these projects uh, because of uh, very, very small um, um, uh, objections like environment and, you know, uh, projecting um, things which are not very, very scientific. Uh, but India needs to have a great development on these islands because uh, when we project uh, our naval, sea and air power towards Strait of Malacca and beyond, uh, we need a certain basic infrastructure there. Indian Navy has started some projects uh, which are Okay, from open sources also, we are making naval jetties there, we are making submarine harbours there. Indian Air Force is also trying to build our runway, which will be a little longer runway so that our uh, long-range bombers can take off and land from there. Indian Army is also expanding their troop capabilities uh, from uh, one brigade strength to uh, one division strength in future. So, Asavri, uh, we need development of Andaman and Nicobar. Uh, not only as a strategic military base, but also as a strategic asset. If India is progressing, then Andaman Nicobar also must progress. And there is no doubt why we should not. Yes. Right, uh, absolutely, sir. Stay on with us. In fact, joining us at this point of time is Captain. Um, in fact, joining us at this point of time is uh, Mr. G V R Shastri, political analyst. Uh, so, thank you so much for taking our time and speaking to us on NewsX. Now, as far as this uh, uh, great Great Nicobar Island project is concerned, how do you view uh, the project in its entirety, and why do you feel, uh, in your assessment, why do you think it's uh, significant and uh, it's essential? It's very, very, very essential. Actually, this would have been uh, 
identified by the Congress resume and the Nehra Jawaharlal Nehru time. They have never ever thought of it because it's in the Malacca Strait. It is a very very crucial important strait for the China Chinese economy and China. But it was completely ignored. It never bothered about it. So what I suggest, what I feel is, if you understand that, you know, we are just 200 kilometer vicinity of Indonesia and Malaysia, and the Nicobar is the crucial for the coastal integrated development. In out of 7,300 kilometers, 2,300 kilometers are island. We have a one, two, three, six islands are there for this nation. And Nicobar island, Nicobar, Andaman Nicobar is going to be, be it will be equal to the Singapore. Then we have a integrated port. That port is going to facilitate the entire logistics hub. There, you know, you need not. You can you can uh, import all this. Till now, till now, 61 percent imports are landing in Singapore. Now we don't require anymore. We require to land at Singapore. All the imports of India, uh, originating in India, can land in Greater Nicobar. From there, we can easily. And more than that. It is because of Malacca Strait. Our uh, see the combined forces. You can see in Andaman Nicobar, it's a combined forces. Army, Navy, Air Force. It's a combined forces. It's hmm. not a separate forces there. So combined forces head also there. So we need it should be integrated, and we want this to be because Varsha project is in Bajaj. Varsha is a very very crucial project of India, Indian Navy. So if Varsha project, if at all it is be integrated with NAV. The Eastern Command of Na Vijayak towards the Nicobar it is very crucial for us. So coming days, I am 100% sure hmm. this, this is 75,000 crores very much needed project. Thanks to Prime Minister Modi, at least he recognised this because this was we are utter failure not to recognise this for so so much of long. We were, there is some kind of grass manipulation as far as the development of the. Uh, Andaman Nicobar is good, sir. Nicobar, at least the Greater Nicobar. So I suggest this should be. This it can't be like this at all, at any point of time. At any point of time, if you see the coastal integrated development, or all imports and exports can take place from Greater Nicobar, and Greater Nicobar is going to be our crucial defence point, very very crucial defence point for us. And for navy, for army, for air force, this is because China to counter China, it's the counter China is a must, necessary, a need for this nation. Not only need for this nation, but right. Asian Pacific countries. South China, there are so many countries are pain. You know, they are in the pain hmm. to co not be able to counter China. So we are the only power to counter China, and that we have a power available with us is Malacca Strait. Malacca Strait, if one to Malacca Strait is in the SEZ of uh, Greater Nicobar Island, we can control the entire thing. It was, I have, I have written a book called National Maritime Strategy. I am Professor Jiria Shastri. That is there, it is a very much explained the doctrine of Malacca Strait. The doctrine of Malacca Strait is crucial for this nation. Our GDP will go almost 2 to 200 percent in enhancement in the GDP because of shifting from Singapore to. Right. Absolutely, absolutely, so absolutely. In fact, joining us at this point of time is Captain Sanjay Karvi, a Navy officer. So, good afternoon to you and thank you so much for speaking to us on News X. Now, you know, when the Congress argues that this project poses a threat to the tribal communities and their natural ecosystem, that's a rational argument. But, however, China has built bases that are very close to India and therefore poses a threat to our national security. So, then how do we come to consensus? What's your assessment? I think we've lost that connection over there. But I'm going to, in fact, uh, propose this question to Group Captain UK Devnath. Sir, uh, uh, you know, again, uh, when the Congress says that um, this is going to, um, in fact, uh, pose a threat to the ecosystem and the lives of the tribal communities in Andaman and Nicobar, that's a fair and a rational argument. Then, uh, you know, but the bases, the, the, these Chinese bases are way too close to the Indian territory. And, you know, with that, where do we then strike a consensus? What's your uh, assessment on that front? Uh, Savri, uh, whatever Congress party is saying, their concern for environmental protection and uh, rights of the tribals who are staying there are uh, okay. Just uh, we have, uh, they have some relevance. 
But in the overall strategic perspective, we have to develop Andaman Nicobar Island chains as a strategic base for India, our industry, and most important, our economy and um, you know other concerns. By other concerns, uh, ch uh, what Congress is saying, okay, if there are environmental con concerns, we can always take uh, uh, expert opinion for, from uh, environmentalists and from um, uh, uh, people who are expert in environmental engineering. Uh, similarly, in case there are concern for the tribals who are staying in far-flung re regions of Andaman Nicobar, uh, we must respect that and we can take um, uh, expert opinion from people who deal with anthropologists are there, historians are there. Uh, these anthropologists, they will help government of India in guiding how to protect the rights of the tribal people who stay there. Right. Just environmental concerns and tribal concerns should not uh, stop us from progressing Andaman uh, Nicobar as a great military base or as a, or as a great industrial base. Uh, see, our exclusive economic zone extends 200 nautical miles into right. sea. So hmm. If you can take from all islands, it is 3 lakh square kilometer worth of potential hiding under the sea to be explored by Indian um, uh, geographists, by our naturalists and by our trade, uh, etc. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, sir. Stay on with us. In fact, joining us at this point of time is uh, Captain uh, Sanjay Karve, Navy officer. So, thank you so much uh, for taking our time and speaking to us on News X. Now, you know, um, we've uh, given our viewers an understanding on China's secret, uh, you know, secret bases, whether that's the Reem base uh, um, or, you know, it's the the, the Woody Island and, and all such uh, Subi Reef and all such uh, bases that they already have established. And, you know, in fact, when we talk about um, the military activities that are happening in uh, the Coco Island with all these developments that are taking place, um, you know, how significant does this project then become? Perhaps if, for example, an escalation uh, were to take place. Thank you, Asavri. If you look at the entire geopolitical picture today very carefully, China is very slowly and steadily encircling the Indian coast, be it the Lakshadweep, be it their port in Sri Lanka, be it the Indonesia, be it Burma. It is essential for us to look after our own maritime safety and our economic safety because most of our traffic and trade passes through Malacca trade. And Nicobar Islands are placed at such a vantage position that if we don't utilize it and we don't make maximum benefit out of its location, 20 years down the line, we would actually regret as to why we have not taken action. On the accusation that 15% of forest land is being lost, you also have to look at it. What are the advantages that you are going to get? You are going to generate employment. You are going to develop that place. When you look at the overall pros and cons, you will see that the pros far outweigh the cons. And the Congress Party's accusation and the tribals are being mislaid or the tribals are being destroyed. It will be very interesting to ask them, what did they do from 1947 to 1995 or 2000 for the tribals? Other than notifying a particular area as a tribal area, has anyone ever tried to uplift the tribals? I think we are taking great joy and happiness in claiming that, oh, we have the oldest tribe in the world and we don't want them to develop. How do you become a developed nation when one part of your country still lives in primitive ages? I don't think there is nothing to be proud about it. Yes, I agree. Some things have to be maintained. But they also deserve a right to know or to live the way the rest of the world is living. You look whether in the US or the Australia, where the originals are there, they are also moving ahead with time. You just can't say that their tribal cities, their tribal land, they must have their own way of living. Has anyone told them what is a modern way of living? Don't they deserve modern health care? Don't they deserve modern infrastructure? And what is the cost? 15%? Now suddenly some group turns around and says, we have revoked the NOC. Is this a joke? You first give a NOC, then you revoke a NOC. That means tomorrow if the leader changes, they will again issue a fresh NOC. You have to look at the broader picture. What is the economic front? One is the security aspect. Economically, the uh, do you view this evaluation? What's your assessment?
Mr. Shastri, are you here with us? Can you hear? Right, Hello, sir. Absolutely. Hear. Yes, sir. See, absolutely. This is what exactly I said because it's in the I've written in the national maritime strategy also. Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay, I think uh, we're facing some technical issues over there. But with that, I'd like to thank all our guests. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.